Hey, Steve Zonard here with Treviso Realty and Remax Zonard Associates. This is um, actually a quick video on both sides of the border. Just just ran into something yesterday and just want to jump right into it. Um, so yesterday, and I, I'm going to go through this piece by piece. So yesterday we went to go visit a community. Obviously, we, we uh, preview communities. We shoot video content, then we send it back up north. So clients are uh, only have three to five days to look at properties or different communities we want to definitely give them all the information up front. So we go to a community yesterday based in Naples, uh, down to Mockley off of Oil Well, a little bit uh, east of, an, of like downtown Naples, but ultimately in Naples. So we're there and we're looking at um, single family dwellings because we got clients actually coming in on Saturday. So we want to make sure we got a heads up on the community and what it has to offer. And then what I've noticed driving into the community is beautiful uh, townhomes. So it's like, wow, these are great. This is a great selling product. We've we've done a lot of business with Lennar. We sold a lot of these products, uh, uh, the Bennett and the Avery is the uh, townhome models. We love them. They're, they're great units. Um, we sell them all across Southwest Florida because they're exactly the same. I'm like, this is great. This is, gives an affordable... Uh, price range for clients that can't afford the six, seven hundred, eight hundred thousand dollar range. This is perfect. These will be above four hundred k. We can blow these out and and um, you know by the handfuls. So uh, as we get in, in and we ask more uh, more information on the sellers there, we were talking to one seller and the seller was um, or not the seller, the sales staff rather, and the sales staff mentioned that that those properties have been sold off prior to them even of their knowledge. So these are obviously. You know, this is this is the boots on the ground people that sell to all the individual uh, clients of these properties. So what happens is sales uh, manager, not even probably based in Southwest Florida, is probably at, at head office at Lennar, and ultimately just did this deal with a huge REIT. Not even a huge REIT. I would say it's a medium REIT compared to like Blackstone or BlackRock, which is the same company. Um, so what happens? 240 units never hit the ground. So 240 affordable townhomes never hit the market where. Um, and I'm going to give you an example of this. So, so now this company buys 240 properties. They're going to create rentals in a beautiful community. So now you got 240 rentals in your community. Um, you know, it is what it is. I guess money talks and it's one, one check for um, 240 units. If you just range them at 350 a pop, it's an $84 million deal. So that's obviously good for the company because it's not no BS with um, – uh, selling and all that stuff, but ultimately it does affect the area and it does affect the people in the area because for example if you are if you're if you grown in that area live with your parents and you're um, You know getting married and and that's a great option for you. you're gonna get the most affordable product in the area Which would have been a townhome now. That's not available. So clearly they, they won't be able to get into Naples They're gonna have to go further north either It's um, even not even a sterile skip over because the pricing is, is it North Fort Myers now is it now into um, Punta Gorda so literally it's just it's 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 sad to say you know see because usually these these guys kind of build off of a um, you know like a highway right they'll, they'll get a parcel of land land which they're doing all over the place here now too and they'll build purpose departments but now buying like single-family dwellings that was meant for they say like uh, people like ourselves if either you're a downsizing either you're a first-time buyer either you're an investor or a second property owner that would have been a great house for everybody um, but it's not available anymore. And I want to bring out a quick, quick thing here, quick, some articles. And this is why it's brought to my attention too. Like, the, like we're the canary in the mine shaft. Like I've actually touched that product and saw it disappear. So it's not like I'm reading an article and, and just reading, uh, you know, letters on a page. This is like a physical, uh, interaction that actually just slipped between our fingers. Um, so if, if you remember, so Blackstone and BlackRock, the same company, you remember earlier this year, they purchased three and a half billion dollars of real estate, of uh, single family dwellings. These are rental apartments. Um, again, this was like 37,000 units. And, and why I'm, I'm talking about this, you'll, you'll understand later, is you, you need to buy now. And we'll, we'll talk, it'll tell you why. Um, so 37,000 units they, they bought. This is the beginning of the year, um, three and a half billion dollar deal. And now I just found out yesterday they just bought another big investment firm that did all residential real estate, and they bought 76 apartment communities, and that's a $10 billion deal. So these guys dropped like 13 to $14 billion in real estate in the beginning, first quarter of this year. Remember Warren Buffett never invested in anything uh, post-COVID, and then ultimately he's dropped like six, $700 million into um, Lennar and DR Horton, which is our largest builders here in America. So this is obviously these guys at Wall Street are betting on Main Street and they're, building on, they're betting on the uh, real estate market more than ever. And what that's doing is if these guys get to control everything, and again, air, so air 
Air Communities, which is what the Blackstone's purchasing now, has 27,000 units. So these guys have acquired well over 60,000 units in the last, let's say, a quarter, and, uh, and we're kind of sitting tight. And it's almost like we're reading these messages with um, do we buy, do we not buy, the interest rates are high, it's unaffordable, sit tight, don't do anything, don't buy any more investments. I think it's, and again, it's as much as my brain always, uh, you know, goes away from risk, it just, this is a time we're going to have to push towards it because obviously the messages are telling us not to do anything. And if these guys are all buying in, they kind of figured it's at the bottom. Uh, you know, you don't drop like 12 to $13 billion and not think there's going to be an upside to it. It's not a small deal. Um, it's almost like a lot of these... A lot of these big REITs that got in trouble, obviously they held these maybe an, an open rate and now they're in higher rates currently right now. And obviously they got to unload properties that kind of make everything whole. And then you've got a, a, a behemoth like Blackstone and BlackRock, they're just buying everything up because they have too much, they have so much cash. They're worth 10 trillion in assets. Basically like a country, they can navigate things a lot better than let's say smaller REITs that are just worth maybe 1 billion. Um, but at the same time, you kind of look at it or 10 billion rather, if you kind of look at it, it's it's pretty scary because of the, you can the manipulation with that much power with the market. You can keep keep the rates high, make everything unaffordable. Everything goes on sale. You buy everything and you jack up the prices right up. So this is where where we're kind of looking at now because again, I've always stay away from risk. I always go into a safe bet. That's why I don't do the stock market. I'm more into real estate. And then currently right now, like everything tells me not to buy based on what we're reading and the rates and, and just the conditions. But if you look at these companies making these moves, it is a time to buy. And I'll tell you, if, if you've ever watched a movie called The Wonderful Life with James Stewart, um, if you're in Pottersville, if you've ever seen that, where um, Mr. Potter, if, if, he, if they did like, you know, two versions, because there was obviously J Jimmy Stewart was, was, you know, this good guy who was supplying houses. He was always never really making money, but giving people really affordable houses, affordable terms, and people bought houses and they lived in, they loved them, they raised a family. And, and then Potter was this landlord that owned everything. And what he wanted to do is create just renters. And what he what he did is he basically uh, they had two versions. Obviously, this is like if if he died, um, Jimmy Stewart died or was never born. What would it, what the outcome would have been? And it showed like Mr. Potter kind of owning everything. Everything was dilapidated. Everything was controlled and manipulated. And everyone was a renter, not a homeowner. So he never no one ever generated any wealth in life. And that's similar to what, if you lived in Italy, it's the same idea. Like they, these guys don't generate wealth. And a lot of our wealth is built by owning um, our homes, our real estate. So uh, we are building currently, and this is obviously, uh, in my, reading all the data, I'm looking at this so much inventory, we're six months, six months plus of inventory, rates are high. All those indicators would tell me not to build, but I'm gonna go push forward, we're gonna keep going. And I think once we get to a certain point of that build, we're going to buy the lot next door. We're going to keep this thing rolling quite, quite good. I wish we had more money to buy more. Um, but if even if you're not in the development game, we have properties out here. Like Toronto, forget about it. You can't buy anything there. It doesn't make sense. Everything is, you know, seven, eight hundred, nine hundred thousand for a townhouse going as far north as Allison, even further. What we got here in Southwest Florida, you can buy great properties for two hundred seventy thousand dollars, like a townhome that rents quite well. Even if you're right now, even this goes against everything I believe in, if you're in a little bit of a negative deficit, it's a good time to buy. As long as you can hold the property, you're not going to like lose it based on, let's say, being out of pocket, two to $300 a month, hold it. Because these rates are going to come down at some point, you're going to refinance it, you're going to be in a good spot, and you're going to have great real estate worth a lot of money. And this is how you're going to retire, because if you start buying now, you should be picking up, again, we had a little bit of a transition between obviously moving, uh, adding this business to the, to the overlapping the Toronto business. So a lot of money's got invested into actual building a business rather than uh, back into real estate. This is why we're trying to get back into it now. But it, you should be trying to purchase a property every three years. You try to refinance whatever you, you purchase, pull some equity out, put some more equity in, buy another property, hold it, get it rented. So this is uh, what we got to get back into right now. And I think we have a good opportunity in Southwest Florida. Clearly, we have a property management company. If you're a little bit uh, skittish on who's going to manage the property, we, we, we're a one-stop shop. Um, and again, I'm not trying to sell Florida, buy Toronto. I don't care. It's just buy real estate right now. You're going to have to do something with um, getting in. And it's not just for our sake. It's for our kids' sake, to be honest, because they're not going to be able to afford anything. It's like the jobs, AI is coming in. How many of those jobs are going to be taken? had a conversation with a client yesterday about, you know, a, a daughter becoming a lawyer. I said, that's great, but a lot of AI does a lot of my lawyering right now, to be honest. A lot of the questions I need answered on the fly, 
it's just, we're all going to be uh, taken down a notch, even in real estate. You know, maybe at some point, machines will be doing the negotiations, and all we're going to physically do is open doors and just, uh, you know, <laughs> state the obvious of which room they're in. But that's pretty much it, guys. Um, you have any questions, you can always reach out. At, um, the numbers are on the screen, the U.S. and the Canada number. But have a great day. Bye-bye.